Now, I'm here to talk about housing, but I'm going to start with the census because, you know, as the county executive says, any opportunity I get to get an audience to just hear about what's new with this census, because you guys have a critical audience that you have access to that we really need your help getting to. So Tim and I are going to tag team here. He's going to, if you don't mind, move it on to the next slide. The census itself, it's done every 10 years. It is mandated by the United States Constitution. We've been conducting censuses in this country since 1790. So this is the 24th decennial census. But what's new this time around is that the census is going to be online. You are, your residents, you, your households, are going to get an invitation to respond to the census with a 12-digit code for your specific housing unit. You are not going to get a form in the mail this time, not unless you wait for the fourth mailing to come to your house. Okay? The Census Bureau is trying to do it all online. We have a question already. I didn't even get very far. How do you have the email address? We're not, we're not sending you, the, the, sorry, the Census Bureau is not, in fact, but that's, a, that's actually a really good question. If you get a letter addressed to your name, an email addressed to you, or a phone call addressed to you, it's not a real Census Bureau application or a Census Bureau letter. Oh, so you're getting a letter. They, they, you're going to get a letter addressed to your household, to the household or resident of, okay? They don't have your names. They don't know who lives where, okay? So, but we've done a lot of work behind the scenes to identify housing units, all right? So, so, but, so let me just get into the presentation itself. So the census is really important because it, just, it determines the, where the 435 seats in the House of Representatives in Washington are coming from. New York is probably going to lose another seat at least. We're hoping we don't lose two seats with this census. But as our population does not keep up with other states, we are likely to lose another seat. But more importantly, the census is used for the basis of how $880 billion a year is determined and split amongst the country. In fact, the Census Bureau tells us that for every person that is not counted, it is a loss to local municipalities, including the county, of $2,500 per person per year. So just 400 people not getting counted is a loss of a million dollars a year to the county and to the but it's but it goes across health care and education and fire departments and police and fixing potholes outside so it's a loss just 400 people is a million dollars a year now as the county executive said we weren't worried about it in 2010. it wasn't until after the census results came out that we were like some of these numbers are just wrong. Porchester and Austin were clearly undercounted, likely by thousands of people. And so though those communities have been living with the 2010 census numbers for 10 years, and how much sales tax revenue they get has been tied to those 2010 census numbers. So that's why it's important, and some communities are taking this so seriously they've got their own complete count committees going in to help them collect the information. Tim, if you don't mind. There are hard to count areas across this entire county, okay? If you see an area on this map with color, this is an area that in 2010 had lower than the average, the average rate of return. Nationally, the rate of return was 76%. Westchester County in 2010 had a 73% rate of return. So we were already, we started below the national average. But more than half of the city of Mount Vernon the village of Elmsford and the village of Porchester, more than half of those three municipalities have color, which means that they achieved, they had, they had lower than the average rates in more, of, than, more than half of those three municipalities. But there are, as I said, there are areas of color, and what's unique, we actually did reconnaissance on each of these areas. What's unique to each of these, with the exception of that one up in, the, uh, up in Yorktown that we just, kind of still blows us away, but with, what's unique, they are all areas of multifamily housing, which is why we really need your help. That's why we were really reaching out to Tim about why we needed help. I have brought with me tonight 500 flyers that I am hoping, that Jeff is handing out right now, I am hoping you will be able to take back to your buildings and that you will be able to post by your mailboxes in your buildings because it is so important for people, particularly renters, to know that every household has to get counted. I'm going to tell you a real quick story to just help you get this, this point home. 
I have four children, and I tell people I can't count any of my four children. My son and his wife are married, they live in their own housing, they'll take care of themselves. But my three girls are students. Two of them, my twins, are 26, they're both in grad school, both working on their PhDs. One's in Salt Lake City, one's in Utah, one is, well, Salt Lake City, one's up in Boston. And my youngest daughter is in college, so she lives in a group, in a dorm. She lives in a group quarters. She'll get counted where she lives in Washington, D.C. But <coughs> my 26-year-olds, and Richard, my apologies, I know you've heard this before, Richard Hyman. So my, my 26-year-old in, in um, Salt Lake City was home around Thanksgiving and he asked if I was going to be home the next night. And I said, no, I have to do a census presentation. And my 26-year-old said, what's a census? Yeah, but think about it. Ten years ago, she was 16. There's a whole generation of young people who don't necessarily know what the census is. Now, let me bring that point even further home by telling you my, my other one who's working on her PhD at MIT, okay? She's not, not smart, you know, I can't say she, this girl's not smart. I talked to her about three weeks ago, and she said, Mom, I got the census. And I said, no, you didn't. And she said, Mom, I got the census. It was on that pile of mail that fell over, that was on the table, and it fell over, because nobody's looked at the mail in a long time. Young people don't look at their mail. So that's why we really have to get the message across to young people. Now, the Census Bureau will also tell you that children under five, that they, their best guess is that children under five were undercounted by a million kids in the 2010 census. We think it's because parents didn't think that parents, the children under five mattered. Every person counts. We don't care how old they are. But we can tell by birth certificate, by birth records, that the children under five in Westchester were undercounted. So it's important for us to get to so many different populations. Remember I told you that you're going to respond electronically. How many senior citizens are really comfortable on the computer that they're going to say, what do I do with this fault digit code? How do I respond online? All right, how many people don't even have internet access in their home? They don't have computers in their home. We really are worried about undocumented people. All right, well, we're working on so many different avenues to be able to get the populations and all these hard-to-count groups to better understand the census is coming, it is safe to respond to it, and why it's, it's really so critically important for them to do. So again, you'll be able to respond online, by computer. You'll be able to go to your public library or to a public, what we're going to call census hubs, to publicly available computers where there will be people there who will be help, able to help you to respond if you're not comfortable responding in your own home. You'll be able to respond on your smartphone. That's what's going to get our young people to respond, is the fact that they'll be able to do it you know, right on their smartphone. The Census Bureau, just a couple weeks ago, released a training video about to train people how to help people respond to the census. The training video on how to respond to the census is only six, six and a half minutes long. So if you can train people in six and a half minutes, you can actually complete the census in a lot less than that, okay? So it's only nine questions. They're only gonna ask you, what's your name? Where do you live? What's your age, your sex, your race, your ethnicity? Do you own or rent your home? Okay, this is the one opportunity where the Census Bureau is able to collect 100% of the population data, and they're able to get a good sense of how many vacant housing units there are in this county, as well as those, how many of our owner units are ownership, how many of them are rental. So, and that's part of the information that you're gonna see in a minute in the housing needs assessment. So it is really um, helpful for us to be able to get really good and accurate data. While the census is conducting census 2020, and by the way, the first letters are going to go out on March 12th. Officially, the county executive was correct. April 1st is Census Day. But by April 1st, you'll have gotten three mailings from the Census Bureau already. The first one goes out March 12th with your invitation to respond. The second one's going to go out about four days later. It will get mailed on March 16th. The third one gets mailed on March 26th. The third one's just going to be a postcard, and that's not going to have your code. Um, and it's the fourth one that won't go out until April 8th that you'll actually get the paper survey sent to you if, in fact, by then you have not responded. The good news about us Americans responding electronically is that starting March 20th, we are going to be able to see in real time what our response rates are across the country. All those hard to county areas that I showed you, those were by block group because that's the county planning department's map of the hard to county areas. 
but the Census Bureau is going to release that data at the census tract level. So we're going to be able to call up Mount Vernon and Porchester and Elmsford and be able to say, this one census tract is not doing well. Who's there? What's, what's, what do we tell the Census Bureau? Who do we send in somebody that might be culturally or language-wise more likely to get a response? So we want to be able to help the Census Bureau get real good information. But we're going to be able to see those response rates starting March, March 20th. So it's going to be really helpful in terms of our ability to make sure we are, in fact, getting as many people as we possibly can counted across the country. Oh, there's the dates. I, I got ahead of myself. So, so yeah. So, and it, the last mailing, by the way, will be after um, April. Tw it's going to be on April 20th, and so that's the one that's going to go really be pretty uh, much a postcard that just says it's not too late. You still have time to, re to respond to the census. If, in fact, by the middle to end of April you have not responded to the census, that's when the census takers or enumerators, as they're called, will start knocking on doors. All right? So that to, if people are saying, I don't want people knocking on my doors, particularly our senior citizens, the response to tell them is when you get your code, when you get your letter, respond to the census. Because if not, you're just putting your name, your household on a list where they have to send somebody there. All right, um, so it's really important to do that. Now, the other thing I want to tell you, particularly for any of you who may have seen your buildings, is we are training a whole slew of people with a PowerPoint presentation on the census. And we are asking them to go out to all the senior centers, to all the nutrition programs, and to all the senior buildings. If you have an aunt that lives in there, if you have a grandmother that lives or an elderly parent who lives there, bring cookies and go in and, and educate the seniors about the fact that census is coming. So we are training a whole slew of people that may be asking or may be coming in to use a community room and put together a, set, a group to be able to educate the residents there. If any of you would like us to come and do that for your buildings, we would be absolutely happy to. We are training a whole group of people. I have well over 100 people who have signed up to help us with the census people. The League of Women Voters, we have Indivisible Westchester, we have a whole bunch of different groups that are anxious to help. This is a, the census and, and the ability to get the right amount of money to Westchester covers all demographics, it covers all agencies, it covers all groups. So it is a, it's a project that we have all gotten our arms around, the fact that we need, the county needs help to get this done. And so we've got all sorts of people that are willing to help us and get that message out. Thank you. So you have a sample of what the letter's going to look like. Um, again, it's addressed to the resident of, um, and then it will have a 12-digit census ID. So we need to let people know to watch for this. Bottom line is, if you do not get a letter, if you don't get a code, um, I'll tell you another funny story about my daughter out in Utah. Um, so when I told her about the fact that the census was coming, and, and I said, well, you'll get it in the mail. And she goes, well, what if I don't get mail? And I was like, well, you know, the census bureau, they're going to have your address because you, you have a dish to watch TV or, or whatever it is. She goes, Mom, we don't watch TV. I came to find out that my 26-year-old daughter lives in an illegal basement apartment. It's affordable. Guys, it's affordable housing for a student in grad school. All right, and apparently it has a great yard for her dog. That was her priority at 26. All right, so but the census bureau, we don't, the census bureau does not care if the housing is legal. We want to count people, and we are counting housing units. So the sense the county planning department is a census affiliate. We work behind the scenes with the census bureau to help them prepare for the census. I will tell you, in the summer of 2016, we worked to identify all of these housing units. The housing needs assessment in a second, I'm going to tell you that there are officially 345,885 housing units in Westchester County. When we did our address research, we found 370,000 housing units. We found 24,000 housing units more than the, the Census Bureau had records for. If that doesn't scare you about our ability to get an accurate count, it should. Because just presuming one person lives in each of those units, and we all know there could be families in them, they could be vacant as well, but even just one person living in each of those units is the difference between Westchester being over a million people or not, being the under million, because we're about 374,000 people. Sorry, 974,000 people, sorry. So if you don't mind. So that's it for census. Any questions before I move on to the housing needs assessment? Yes? Uh, so I sell side liability insurance, 
And I see this as the oh, yes, yes. opportunity for a fraudulent yes. census. Uh, uh, I, I will tell you that. To well, impersonate the census, to send letters, to ask for email addresses, personal information. Is there anything being done to yes. find guardians of that? Yes. Especially so with seniors and people that may be vulnerable. A whole part of the presentation that we have prepared for the seniors is what you should ask for and what you should never be asked for. Right. Okay? That's only if they hear the presentation. <laughs> well, that's, that's it's what, yeah, if you get asked for a credit card, a donation, if you get asked for a bank account number, if you get asked for your mother's maiden name, that's not a real census taker there. So again, part of part of our presentation is you should ask for an ID. You should they're going to have this with them. They'll have that with them. So they will have. But the other part of it is, and the Census Bureau will tell you they they're not making public all of their security protocols. But we do know the Census Bureau because they told us, and New York City Census itself has bought up domain names of all the related sites that they could possibly think of. So again, it's 2020census.gov, so they bought up census2020.gov, and they bought census2020.org, and census, so they bought up a whole bunch of the other domain names so that nobody else could get, and they did it a while ago. All right, so we all, we totally agree with you. Um, we've already got the county's Department of Public Safety as well as our consumer protection and the Attorney General's office working on making sure that any hoax that we hear about, any scam that we hear about, that people get with the word out and we start acting on this, anything we hear about very, very quickly. Yes. Uh, one question that I can imagine. Uh, huh? oh. Okay. One question I can imagine being asked, and that is, if somebody, if their uh, immigration status is not clear, they'll say, "Does immigration have access to this information?" Very good question. Thank you very much. Um, so, one of the things that is very clear is employees of the Census Bureau are covered under Title 13 of the U.S. Code. They are under penalty of jail and a huge fine. They are not allowed to share any information that they get. In fact, the Census Bureau this time around is able to get data from all other federal departments. They get it from the mail, the U.S. Postal Service. They get it from HUD. They get it from the VA. They get it from Social Security. They are allowed to get data from other federal departments. But by law, by code, and as proven by courts, they are not allowed to share any of the information that they get. In fact, it extends to the county planning department. Those 24,000 housing addresses that we found, I'm not even allowed to tell the local municipalities the addresses that we found. My employees are covered by Title 13. We are not allowed to share data. Okay? So they're not going to get the The other agencies are not allowed to get data, census data. Okay. Thank you. I just want to say something. Speak up. Thank you. Can you hold on one moment? I just want to say something brief. Thank you for sharing that. Um, that you brought up in college living in a basement. I live in a basement when I came to this country. I'm an immigrant. And that's what makes me say when people think it's a bad thing, it's not a bad thing. But you start it somewhere. And say to that, I save money and put it on a few property. But for the government, they think it's a bad thing. You try to make money. That is what you can afford. It's better than a shelter in the street, you know, so thank you for saying that. As long as it's safe. Yeah, okay. I agree. I agree. Yes. Uh, there's a lot of things people should take into consideration. I do agree with it, but I think it's safe uh, most of the time. It's better than the street that people end up living and then other people are home there to get problems and stuff like that. So thank, thank you for sharing that. Yep. You say that they have to go online and register in the census online. So who is securing the data and making sure that the data is not penetrable? Okay, so the Census Bureau has a whole team and a whole security. They've actually testified before Congress about their security and the measures. Um, has so it been that's tested? what? Has it been tested? It has been, in fact, we can tell you it has been tested because one of the issues that came up, you saw four sets of dates. One of the things that they were extremely concerned about, if anybody remembers when the registrations first came online for Obamacare, everybody tried to get on the system at the same time and the system crashed. So they found they actually had to break up their mailings into four sets 
to go across the country so that, in fact, their call centers and the, and the online um, system would not be overwhelmed by everybody responding to the census on the very first day or very first day. <coughs>